join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Oh, it's it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank we have a special guest here tonight for our celebrations, and I would like to introduce Mike Bush. And Mike, I'm just going to turn uh, the floor over to you to say what you came to say. Thank you. I promise not to take too much of your time. I see you have a very long agenda. Hi, Chad. How are you? It's nice to see you again. Yes, Mike. It's been a while. It has been a long time. You were... Uh, well, I don't know if I was quite that tall. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, do, I uh, do know I weighed a few pounds less. Back then. <laughs> Chad was a big, important accountant, and he looked like he was 12 years old. And we all had to be all were amazed at his mathematical ability and wish that we could have had that. But uh, I wanted to come tonight. Um, you know, I, I could have sent you all just a thank you card to Belinda and to the Key Club. Um, I had the chance to thank the Key Club personally, but as I thought about this um, over the Christmas holiday season, um, I believe that the Key, Wanda, the Key Club of Caston High School deserves a bit more than that. Last December, the Caston Key Club co-hosted and participated in a patient Christmas party for patients at Logan Sports State Hospital with the Fulton County Extension Homemakers. Um, and this was the first year that I had been to this Christmas party. It was fine just completing my 13th month on the job, but as I was talking with the Extension of Homemakers, this was the 40th year that they had hosted this Christmas party for our patients at the hospital. And these two of them, three of them, said without two individuals, well, without two groups, one without Jeannie Rock Cooking, and two without the Key Club's presence to help manage the bingo, the games, the actual party, they wouldn't be able to have this with our patients. Um, I realize that school corporation budgets are tight and outside of school activities, like field trips are uh, expensive and there is more demand for them than there, there is opportunity. Um, so I felt it was important to come and share the experience that I had with the Key Club with you. Um, First of all, I was amazed at the compassion and the friendliness and the respect that they showed to our patients. Uh, I was very impressed with how they interacted with our patients. Um, but what really got me was after our patients had left and the key club was getting ready to go, I said, okay, guys and gals, tell me what you think. Okay, well, I was expecting them to go, oh, it was fine, thanks a lot, had a good time. Oh no, six, seven hands shoot up in the air. And they said, oh, we were really impressed with the way they interacted with us. And the one I was sitting next to took a long time to kind of get used to us, but was really great. And then they started asking me questions, which I totally wasn't expecting. Like, um, the gentleman sitting next to me just really didn't have much to say, and I was wondering if he was feeling okay. And I knew the patient. I said, no, he, he doesn't talk very much. But uh, the fact that he was here made something. It was an incredibly impressive group of young people. And I don't know that I have one for everybody, but I didn't. I'll let you all pass this around. I did get a great picture. They also dressed very, very well <laughs> for, for the occasion. And you can keep it up there. I'm going to send you the pictures on digital files so you can have one. Um, my purpose again for being here is to, is to let you know that back in 2010, the hospital, Logan Sport, uh, underwent a major transition. Uh, half of our patients went other, other places in the state, and we began accepting the most difficult patients that you'll find in any state psychiatric hospital. Uh, part of successful treatment of a patient is the patient understanding, this goes for any of us, that they have an illness and that they have to treat it. And when you have patients with intellectual deficiencies or developmental disabilities, that understanding that they have a disorder is the, really the hard part. And you can't begin treatment until you can make that breakthrough. And so since 2011, 12, we've been treating the most difficult patients to treat. And the way that the key, one, the key club um, from Caxton High School interacted with our students, with our patients, the, um, the compassion 
and the respect they showed was just absolutely incredible. So I wanted just to come and spend a minute thanking you this evening for the opportunity to let them participate in this. Um, I heard from a couple of them that they found it to be a very enriching and rewarding experience. Our patients look forward to this every year. We were down a little bit on numbers, but I had to explain to our students that, you know, everybody could be ready and then the day before someone has a bad day and their behaviors put them into a situation in which they are not allowed to leave the hospital until those behaviors are, are corrected. So uh, and that had happened. That happens a lot, it seems, at Christmas, but <laughs> we're used to that. So thank you very, very much for the opportunity for these students to participate in this program. We're very grateful, and I know the Extension Homemakers <laughs> are very grateful for all the help that the kids gave them. Melinda, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for taking the time to come and, and share that with us. And I, I don't know if you're aware, but when Jeannie Rock's not busy cooking for the homemakers, she's here cooking in our casting cafeteria. She's one of our regular ladies. So. I am, and I actually took a picture of Jeannie cooking and said it to my mom, said, ha ha, I get to eat Jeannie's food today. <laughs> <laughs> to which she replied, where are you? I'm coming. <laughs> so thank you again all very much for your time. Uh -huh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mike. Thanks. Yeah. And you are completely free to go, yes, unless you just have, have a burning desire to sit here throughout the meeting. <laughs> I looked at your agenda and I believe that you were all very anxious to get through it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank, thanks thank again, you. Melinda. Okay, public comment as per advertised items. Okay, moving on to consent agenda. Any questions, discussion? If not, do I have a motion? Mr. President, I move to approve the consent agenda as it is written. And I will second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as printed. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. There's no old business. Moving into new business. Item A, accept a $10,000 donation from Woodlawn Hospital to put, purchase stop arm cameras for our school buses. And, you know, this is a presentation that was made during our public work session, but we just needed to have a documentation in a formal meeting that the board did actually accept that donation. And uh, that will be put toward the cost of stop arms for our school buses that are driving the most highway miles. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions or discussion? I have a motion. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to accept a $10,000 donation from Windblown Hospital to purchase stop arm cameras for school buses. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second to approve item A under new business. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Item B, accept the lowest bid for renovation of the Caston School Corporation and Administrative Building. Along, along with those, we had a couple add-ons and uh, I let a piece a flyer each one of you on shingles. I did not know it. They expect a 35 year shingle, 300 pound weight per square, which is very similar to what's on this sheet I left you. Mm -hmm. The decra is good. There's no two ways about it. After talking to some people to Lumberyard and some other suppliers, I would recommend we go with these shingles simply because we're looking at to go with the deck where we're looking at seventeen thousand dollars additional cost and they've already specced in the I just I thought maybe they'd just spec a thirty year shingle. Right. So with with this information here, this is uh, I think that has a 15 year warranty on 110 mile an hour winds and just a, a, so much heavier shingle than your norm. I think we'd be silly if we went right now with, with the DECRA and, and the extra cost of it. The other one, I'm not going to back off that one, the foam. Oh. 
No, I, I don't think we have back on that either. I, I think, think you'll get that. your money back yeah. in energy yeah, that efficiency was only, on that pretty <clears throat> quickly. I think that was only about $3,100, $3,200 extra to do the foam, and, and I think this building sets out here with no real windbreak. Exactly. That foam, they'll probably put an inch or two in the walls, and that's going to seal the walls up good and tight and cut down on any drafts. So I think that'd be money well spent. So that's my two cents worth. I don't know what the rest of you feel like, but uh, I feel confident in going with these shingles now. So. I guess we can open it up to discussion. Any discussion? Well, I just want to make sure for the record that we, uh, you know, we do have a recommendation from Lancer and BB to go with the lowest quote. They felt that it was a responsible quote, and um, actually, the comp even had the board wanted to go with both alternatives with those added in, it would would have still been the lowest quote, and that's Shepler. Uh, construction, a local contract tractor, and I was happy to see, and I think we talked about this in our uh, previous meeting, that almost all the subcontract tractors that they have recommended our local uh, people that we've worked with, that you know we have a confidence level in, and so I certainly would recommend we go with the lowest bid. I think every one of them subs has done work here, haven't they? Uh, the majority yeah. that I'm aware of, yeah. yeah. And just for the record, I think even even with the deck, if we went from metal shingles and, as Mrs. Douglas said, the foam, he was still 150 some thousand cheaper than the high end. So, uh -huh. so I, I and, and I, there again, I have no doubt that he will he'll do a good job for us. I mean, he come. You contacted uh, Michelle Stark at Logan Sport. He found a lot of work there. So I. I think, we'll I, think, I think there's something to be said about if we can use a local contractor, we got, we got a little more, I don't know, bite or something. If we have a problem, we got someone we can go to. Exactly. And plus, I mean, A, they have the low bid, B, they can do the um, work, and C, I, I would much rather keep the money in our local area here mm -hmm. than have it go to out of town and or out of state. Um, I just feel like if, if we have someone close to home that can do the work, we are silly not to have right. them do it. Well, I think all the other contractors are out of South Bend, Fort Wayne. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Other than one had a connection to Rochester. Mm -hmm. So if there's no further discussion, I'd entertain a motion. And we need, in our motion, we need to specify on our additional work too. So we have that in the, in the minutes. Well, I'll make the motion to accept the bid from Shepler con, uh, Construction and to add in the uh, the extra spray foam to add to that bid to do the casting school add uh, admin building renovation project. I have a motion and a second to accept item B under new business. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Okay. Item C approval for the professional meeting request from Tina Passion, Don Hemlick, Jim Johnson, and Jennifer Lukens to attend part two of the basic training for school safety certification on 2-25-19. I guess we better approve that. <laughs> Coming right up. We've gone for many, many years with only having one or sometimes two people in our school corporation that are actually certified with the for the state uh, safety uh, certification and it was a goal uh, to have more people go through that training and you know, when they go down to those meetings, there's a variety of different topics and they can kind of go to pick and choose and go to different things and bring back a lot more information. So I'm really pleased that these people were willing to step up and um, make, the, make the effort to go through that training. And uh, there's some ongoing requirements to maintain that certification. So it's not just a one-time thing for them. So that'll be wonderful for our school corporation. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. I have a motion. 
Mr. President, uh, I move that we uh, approve the, the request uh, for Tina Fashion, Don Hemlock, Jim Johnson, and Jennifer Lukens to attend as part two of the basic training uh, for school safety on February 25th, 2019, and any notes. And I'll second them. I have a motion and a second to approve item D under, or item C under new business. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> item D, consider a request for the Fulton Athletic League's Junior High Baseball Club, Junior High Softball Club to use school facility, facilities for games and practices under the liability umbrella of the Fulton Athletic League. I think this is something they've done in the past. The Baseball League has been doing that um, for a while. I don't know how many years, but that's been something that's already been in place. And then um, you see it. there's also a letter from Camille Zimpleman uh, assuring that the league insurance would cover those kids while utilizing school grounds. And uh, the softball, girls softball team would like to do the same thing. Mr. Helmick would be helping those kids. Mm -hmm. Um, so it would be a great feeder program for our varsity softball program. Okay, thank you. Any discussion, questions? Why aren't, why don't we just make it a casting team under the casting schools? I'm sure there's a very good reason, reason why I'll tell we you why. don't. Because then we're going to have more people complaining to us about the fall baseball league. <laughs> well, Man, I, I just didn't know, since this is the 7th and 8th grade, or I guess 6th, 7th, and 8th, right. now why we just didn't make it a casting team. I just I you know I mean we never have had junior high baseball <coughs> or softball it would it would be an addition to mm -hmm. our sporting program so we would have the expense of hiring coaches mm -hmm. and right. it's just a program that's been I guess our kids in our community and our school community have been serviced through mm -hmm. the local leagues through you know little league and then up through the junior high level for many, many years, okay. and those programs have been in place and sustainable, so. I just didn't know. Yeah. And, and most schools currently do not have a junior high okay. program, which usually run through like a town like park, a town park okay. or something, and, and uh, I can see it coming down the road. Well, I think, I mean, that seems to be kind of how it's trending towards, I just didn't know. Right, that. and I think another reason, probably, it's always been a summer program. So most of our sporting things have taken place during the school year, and this would be, you know, a summertime program, okay. so. I, I just didn't know. Uh -huh. The plus side to this is that, although it's run through the Fulton County, or Fulton League, the head coaches of each of the respective sports is taking a, a guidance to okay. them and Good. getting them mm -hmm. Acclimated to their program. Good. Okay. Okay. If there's no other questions or discussion, I have a motion. Mr. President, I vote to approve the request for the Fulton Athletic League's Junior High Baseball Club and Junior High Softball Club to use school facilities for games and practices under the liability umbrella of the Fulton Athletic League. And I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve item D under new business. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. No other old business or other business reports and information. Um, I, I do have the SA-5 and I'll send that uh, to you in a separate email. I didn't have that prior to sending the packet out. And then um, I provided, a, and I don't know if you had an opportunity to take a look at it, but I provided quite a bit of information about kind of where we are with our uh, dissolution of the LaJesse Co-op and I would anticipate probably at the March meeting we'll have a formal agreement for the board to um, act upon for that. Uh, that's in the works. So, as you can see, it you know we are going to incur some additional costs, which we probably knew that was going to happen. But I did receive some good uh, information today about a potential candidate for speech that would be available three days a week for us, which really is what we need for our current caseload and we thought that was going to probably not be feasible that we would find someone that would be willing to do part-time but it looks like that's going to work out so that will save a little bit on the cost of the speech pathologist so that was good news okay. thank you principals you have any kind of a report I just, or information 
I have a little bit of information. Um, just wanted to let you know that um, Josiah Held, a fifth grader at Caston, has been accepted into the Big M math program for this summer for gifted uh, students in mathematics, and he was um, nominated by uh, Tina Passion and me, and uh, uh, received a, uh, Mom received a letter on Monday night, was really excited about that, so uh, we're looking forward to that opportunity for him. It's been a good opportunity for other students who have uh, been able to participate in the last couple of years. What was the name of that thing? Big M. Yeah, the Ball State. The Ball State. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot. Um, I just wanted to report on one thing. Could have been in celebrations. I know our junior high uh, robotics, who was the elementary, now they've they've moved up, to, and they they were victorious again in a. Uh, um, in one of their matches where the, they'll compete, um, hoping to get to nationals again. That's what those four boys, and I think Chad's uh, son was one of them as well. He wasn't there when he presented the trophy. He was some, must have been in Alabama at the time, but... Uh, he might have been, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just, uh, we're just keeping that going. It started in the elementary, and, and we're still um, having that uh, success. To piggyback on that, all uh, all of the elementary teams, as of uh, Tuesday, it is today, Wednesday, thanks. As of as of Tuesday, all of the elementary teams had um, qualified for state, the state competition, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's three teams. I think we have four. Okay. Elementary, but um, have qualified for state, and then uh, but they have to be in the top 200 teams in the state. And as of Tuesday, we were. But there's another contest this weekend, so we'll see. But hopefully they'll all be coming. Okay. Any other administrators have anything? Okay. Public comment. Board comment. Well, I would like to say that first off, Saturday, um, I was at the legislative breakfast. Um, and yesterday was down at the State House. Um, they had a celebration um, in the Senate and in the uh, House for the ISBA, uh, the Indiana School Board Association, and it was their first annual State House Day. And it was quite interesting. We got to talk to our legislators and eat lunch with them at our table, you know, um, and the representatives we were able to talk to about certain bills, but the Senate hadn't switched the bills over, so they didn't, <laughs> they didn't know some of the bills that the Senate was passing that we wanted to talk to them about. They didn't know yet, so I guess next year I'm hoping they'll be a week later so they at least have a clue as to what we're talking about. But it was interesting that we got to talk to them. Um, I learned a lot. Um, so, anyway. What I did yesterday. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to do that. Yeah, That's, yeah, appreciate it. I was just thankful the weather was good because I'm like, I don't want to drive down. <laughs> did I see somewhere where they turned down the thing on minimum starting wage for teachers in Indiana? Well, I could tell or you. I don't very think well that be. That's, there, I think there were two bills that actually wanted to somehow set a, a minimum starting salary for teachers or wage and I, I don't know for I sure which ones have they, they just completely rejected it all together. Yeah. So and they wonder why you can't get young people to get into the profession. Mm -hmm. Christy, I am gonna be down um, at the State House on the twentieth of March uh, with our superintendent study council. So that'll be timing that, you know, they'll be through another level of those passing back and forth so if you have any that you follow up on that you would like for me to touch base just let me know okay. yeah because i actually am planning on going down 26 um because mitchell's going to be a page down oh. there so yeah, anybody, else, anybody else work down there yeah jacqueline's down there <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> i get the scoop on all the bills she tells, she tells me yeah right now they're having a heated debate and people walking out it's getting real exciting so i get a Play by play. <laughs> it's on the hate crime, so it has nothing to do with the school. Oh, but. <laughs> well, I'll continue passing those weekly updates yeah, to you guys, and you know that, that kind of keeps that. you yeah. abreast of what's happening that pertains to education, at least. So they, um, 
one of the things that the ISBA does, because I'm um, working with the legislative part of it, um, they s tell me when they send a thing to call your, okay. and I don't know, do they send it to you guys too? I I, okay, I didn't know. That might be what uh, Mrs. Okay. Douglas Lance is forwarding to us I too. Mm -hmm. I can't think of that lady's name, and then you send it to me too. So either Brooke or Shayla. She's spoken at several of the meetings we've gone to. I can't think of her name. Lisa Tanzow. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's the one of the ISBA attorneys. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that information, Christy. Uh, anything else for board comment? Next meeting will be March 20th at 6.30. Okay. And if there's nothing else, I have a motion to adjourn. Mr. President, I move to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? <clears throat>